Hey, how you doing? Danny here from No Clip with a kind of a different type of video that we're used to doing. Uh, one that's really exciting, uh, as you've probably seen from the thumbnail and the name on the video, uh, but one that I, I think we need to give critical context to. And context is basically the most important thing about um, this video and why we're able to publish it. So over the years, No Clip has uncovered games that were cancelled. We've uncovered game footage uh, of these games, and we've been really lucky in many instances to show off pretty big chunks of these games and to sort of um, explain and give historical context for how far they were, why they got cancelled, all that type of stuff. Um, doing this work in involves a lot of, you know, work you don't see. It involves a lot of like, you know, sort of politics and, and you know, making sure that all the stakeholders involved are comfortable with what's about to be shown, which is why we don't just dump all the gameplay on the internet. You know, we need to make sure that everyone's happy and we also need to provide some sort of context for what you're about to see. Because the thing about cancelled games is that sometimes when you see the footage of them, they can create more questions than they answer. And we always want people when they've watched one of our documentaries to feel like they've gotten all the answers. So I guess this is the sort of opposite side of that coin where uh, while we edit these docs and while we're sort of economical in what we show, ultimately Noclip's mission is to preserve video game history and to tell as much of it as possible. And we don't want to just sit on this gameplay. Um, it's not just for us, it's for everyone. And now it's been a couple of years since our documentary on Arcane Studios where we first showed off gameplay of this canceled, unreleased, uh, unfinished Half-Life game that Arcane Studios were working on. And uh, we think it's time to show the rest of the gameplay that we recorded, which was about an hour. That said, we don't want to put it up without critical context because that might create more questions than it answers. So that's what this video is going to be. It's a gameplay showcase where we're going to show the footage that we got without any watermarks or without any commentary or any of that sort of stuff. But we're going to take breaks in between the footage so that your little sort of Irish helper can pop up here and give you uh, not just critical context for the gameplay, but also added information because while I was playing, I was sitting down with the art director uh, for Arcane Lyon, Sebastien Metton, uh, who worked on the project and he was telling me lots of interesting factoids and uh, development stories about it as well. So uh, that's what this is going to be. But before we get into all that, I guess let's answer the two most important questions uh, about this video. What is it you're going to see and how did we get this footage? In early 2020, we traveled to Lyon, France as part of a documentary covering the history of Arcane Studios. Arcane are most known for the Dishonored franchise, Prey, and most recently, Deathloop. But in our documentary, we also explored the design of three unreleased games, The Crossing, LMNO, and Ravenholm. To learn more about these games and to get a better understanding of why none of them were released, we recommend checking out our full documentary. Link in the description below. And like all our videos, the documentary has chapter markers, so if you want, you can just skip ahead to the game you want to see. Once again, our sincere thanks to Arcane, Bethesda and Valve for helping us to tell the story of these unreleased games. The build you're about to see had been put together near the end of development to try and show Valve the progress the team at Arcane had made. It's this footage of my playthrough that you're going to see. We'll get into specifics a little bit later, but it's important to understand that everything you're about to see is from an incomplete game, meaning that a lot of stuff is going to be missing and even much of the content that's here is either an early pass or placeholder. So elements like art, animations, gameplay, level design, even voice work were likely to go through further changes. Look, the most important thing to remember is that this gameplay was not created with public consumption as the goal. This isn't a trailer, it's not an official gameplay reveal. This is just some footage we pulled from an in-development title. So the frame rate's going to be a little bit rough from time to time. And it's also fair to say that elements of the story, settings and characters were not necessarily set in stone either. Arcane had been given free creative reign in these areas by Valve, and ultimately the game was cancelled before any of these elements were finalised. Also, the gameplay was captured via shadow play in 1080p at 60 frames per second, but we've decided to render and upload this video in 4K to help retain as much quality as possible during YouTube's compression. And gentle reminder for the few of you who are a little bit confused as to why all the game text is in French, it's because the developers are based in France. Okay, that's enough of an introduction. Are you excited? <laughs> I was when I got to play it. I'm excited for you all to see it finally. Um, let's jump into the introduction to Ravenholm with everyone's favorite Half-Life 2 priest, Father Grigori.
So much violence. I regret you have become part of it. And yet I confess, I am gladdened by your company. Too much solitude is not good for a man who, like myself, wishes only to serve. But I have been good for nothing of late. My soul is filled with evil, and like this town, it must be purged. Now I cannot claim great wisdom. Yet through much trial and error, I have found a way to immunize myself against the demon's neurotoxins. Homeopathic principles, you understand. <sighs> we have time for a quick bite. Supping on nourishment quite plentiful in Ravenholm. Would that it were otherwise. If one is sufficiently famished, the white meat is tolerable. I will make no comparisons to poultry. Ah, there you are! Kill your children, I'm quite immune to their bite. This I hardly even noticed. Try to provide some illumination. I have prayed for assistance with this particular task, and tonight my prayers were answered. <laughs> but this has ceased being about them. Truth be told, brother, I fear for myself, and now for you as well. The beacon exists to send out a signal. It will be a guiding light to all who have eyes to see. No time! We are safe here no longer. They have surrounded us like water. They have seized away our day! Oh, brother. Don't wait for me. I will find you after demons in the dark. Okay, a couple of notes on that. Uh, the gameplay you just saw was actually recorded by Sebastian Maton when I did the original recording uh, with Shadowplay on site there was no gameplay audio so he went back and recorded that for me. The rest of the gameplay you're about to see was played by me so if you have any problems with it uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter I guess. Um, so a couple of things there. First of all, th this game wouldn't have starred Gordon Freeman. I know the introductory animation of him getting up had the HEV suit, but uh, they said it was gonna be a completely uh, different character. Um, at the end of the gameplay section you're about to see, though there is something from Half-Life 2, something that was unused. Uh, Viktor Antonov, who is the art director on Half-Life 2, he's worked with Arkane a bunch. He's friends with Sebastian Maton, a bunch of the folks at Arkane. Um, he had a concept for Half-Life 2, which was this sort of windmill structure, which never actually got used in Half-Life 2, so they used it in Ravenholm. Uh, you'll see Grigori sort of tinkering with it at the end of the next section. Um, but the biggest thing to look at in this gameplay section is the introduction of the sort of melee and physics, uh, I guess, combat system they have here. Arcane made 2006's Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, which was a game where you could use spells and use melee attacks to stagger enemies and knock them off cliffs and stuff like that. And they basically pulled that into this because that game was also developed in Source. So keep an eye out for that. There's lots of instances where the zombies who are running towards you get knocked into spikes 
uh, knocked over railings. Uh, it's pretty cool. And of course, a lot of this stuff is placeholder, but even so, it uh, looks pretty neat for as far along as the game was. Uh, all right, enough talking. Here's the next gameplay section. Praise the light that you have survived. Some fresh air is just ahead. In the yard, you will see some of my mechanisms for restoring power. Here, 
Isn't it lovely? Behold, brother. This generator will power my electrical snares as well as the signal beacon. Be very careful. With more than a hundred thousand volts, you know those bolts will jump. In the east wing. Likely a breaker I missed. I'll need your help finding it. Once you throw the switch, power in the east wing will be restored, and we can proceed. Go that way, brother. I have a radio that will patch me into the hospital's intercom system. I will try to keep you company along the way. Okay, we head into the hospital facility. It's got an asylum and a lab in it. Um, a couple of notes on this. First of all, Sebastian said that the team went to great lengths to make sure that there was sort of um, architectural variety in this area. So while the facility we go into right now is gonna be in the sort of 60s style with dropped ceilings and stuff like that, uh, in later chapters, you spend some time in the 19th century sort of original facade of the building. Um, uh, and he said, yeah, it was important to basically give it a little bit of texture so it didn't feel like you were corridor crawling through the same type of areas for a long period of time. Um, but the showstopper in this section is the introduction of Arcane's really remarkable electricity gameplay. Um, it's gonna escalate as we get through the chapters, uh, so this is pretty basic stuff, but once you see it, especially if you haven't seen our documentary and this is the first time you're seeing it, it's pretty uh, special and cool and fun, so uh, enjoy. cables. You should be nearing the place where the power can be restored to the east wing.
Praise the lights, brother. You did it. Electricity flows into the east wing. I can see the lights from here. There must be a breach deep in the hospital basement. You'll have to cross the entire east wing, then drop into the basement. It will be a long journey, brother. I will do my best to keep up your morale. Okay, we move ahead onto the next chapter of the game entitled Swarming. Just a quick couple of notes here. First of all, you may have heard some new music. Uh, Sebastian said that they did actually compose an original score for this game. So much of that stuff uh, is here. And I think it's the first time some of it's uh, ever been heard, which is pretty cool. Uh, on top of that, there's a couple of uh, interesting mechanical innovations here. It's not in this build, but Sebastian said that later builds of the game had it so that when the zombies are pinned to the wall or pinned to the floor, that they could pull their arms out of their sockets and keep chasing after you or presumably pull their feet off of the, the bolts when they're wedged to the floor, uh, which is pretty cool. And there's another element of the electronic play that happens here that you should keep an eye out for. So other objects in the world that are metallic are able to conduct the electricity. And there's lots of that sort of 
gameplay and gunplay happening here. Obviously, I'm only able to play the game through once this section, so keep an eye out for other ways I might have been able to uh, complete some of the puzzles.
a transformer is problematic. I admit that I am not an expert in this kind of machinery. Still, I think it should be working soon. I hope your progress towards the breach is not too disheartening.
This next section of the game, Pitch Black, takes place in the 19th century part of the facility and introduces a couple of interesting things. There is a new acid spitting zombie which sort of works in cahoots with the more regular zombies to create more dynamic uh, gameplay encounters. And these, I think they're apes or monkeys, sorry, <laughs> biologists, that are really smart. So I guess in the story, Grigori had been, I guess, testing on them or experimenting with them uh, with the serum and they sort of became feral and, and quite um, intelligent. Uh, it may not come across in the gameplay, but those weren't scripted sequences when you see them jumping into the air ducts. They were able to basically evade you by running into air ducts and they'd appear out of another one. So they try and flank you. Um, almost like the sort of um, assassins in the original Half-Life. You know, once you lost them, they sort of, you didn't really know where they were coming from. And when I was playing, it was really um, interesting. Uh, another part about this game, this part of the level is that some of the textures here are unfinished. Uh, Sebastian said there was a lot of placeholder here. And also because there is no dynamic lighting in Source, or at least this version they were using, some of these areas took a long time to work. It was pretty intensive, but he said it was worth it because in this chapter, they were really starting to show the horror vibes of later chapters. And actually, one final note. Uh, you may have seen Grigori sort of injecting himself again and again with the serum to try and stop the zombification process happening to him. Um, I guess ultimately it doesn't work. We got some of this concept art which shows that uh, he sort of ultimately succumbs and uh, turns into what I think might have been the end boss of the game. Sebastian was a little bit vague about it but it uh, sure looks like maybe you'll be fighting Grigori later in the game. Anyway, enjoy the gameplay.
I should warn you. There were experiments. Laboratory animals, you understand. They were part of the search for Kia. An anti-venom. Some of the early tests failed. You may see the results in their brutal and degenerative glory. Closing on the source of evil, brother. I'm sure the breach is just beyond these dark warrens.
Okay, so in the next chapter of the game, we start to sort of drift into the more unfinished levels. Here we had to use a couple of junction maps to get to the area you're about to see where we have a lot of combat and they introduce a couple of new tools that you can use to utilize the electricity in new and interesting ways. And then ultimately it ends in a sort of a climactic um, shootout slash puzzle, which uh, you'll see right at the end of this gameplay. Uh, but stick around at the end because there's a couple of things I want to clear up um, once we're done here. Uh, enjoy. Brother, some of the hospital's wiring is hopelessly ruined, even with the power restored. You will want to find my charge gun. It is both a powerful tool and a weapon.
Hello, brother. We meet again at last. This is the passageway to the lab I've been using. It holds the serum I need for my injections. Charge the forklift, brother, so that I can access the window. I will open the door from the far side. Okay, that's all the footage we have. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much to Arcane and Bethesda and Valve for being so cool with us uh, sharing this and ultimately making it happen. Thank you so much to everyone for being so patient in us getting this out. Game preservation is a huge part of Noclip's mission and you know, personally as a Half-Life fan, I know it meant so much to be able to sit down and play this game. It's like absolute bucket list style stuff. Um, and I know that there are people out there who are more passionate about Half-Life than I am. So getting this footage out there, I know means a lot to them and it means a lot to me. Um, if you like what we do at Noclip, head over to patreon.com slash Noclip and help us out and help us fund more documentaries. And if you don't, that's fine too. Thank you so much for caring about the work we do. Hit subscribe, like, do all that sort of stuff. Who knows what next gameplay showcase we'll have in the future. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.